Sony Pictures invites you to watch the sequel to the superhero reboot, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. As much a setup for a Sinister Six film you didn't ask for, as it is a sequel to The Amazing Spider-Man, which you also didn't ask for. <laughs> From the studio that already learned a hard lesson about putting too many villains in a Spider-Man picture, comes a Spider-Man film with too many villains. Watch as Sony makes all the same mistakes they made with Spider-Man 3, the movie responsible for rebooting the franchise in the first place. Well almost all of them. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 partially tells the underdeveloped story of Max, an electrician who works at Oscorp who is sort of evil because he fantasizes about choking Ryan Howard from the office and has a shrine to Spider-Man in his apartment. Max transforms into Electro after he takes on this insanely dangerous job with a 100% chance of something bad happening. Experience the story of Peter Parker and his girlfriend Gwen Stacy who bond and make out over their shared guilt over dead parents. Juggling a relationship and a full-time job as Spider-Man is nothing compared to his newest challenge, finding the treasure hidden by the Declaration of Independence. Peter's adventure veers into dark revelations about his father's work that could change the course of history and offer him a much-needed catharsis we thought we saw him get in the last chapter. Critics are already calling it the field of dreams of superhero films, with more relationship drama than a Meg Ryan movie. You need me. Yes! I need you! And only 30 minutes more actual Spider-Man scenes than a Meg Ryan movie. Including, yet again saving a baby from a burning building, crawling through tunnels, doing this, and whatever this is. Spider-Man faces his greatest challenge yet as he takes on the brother of Dr. Manhattan so that Sony can cockblock Marvel from once again owning the movie rights to the character. And speaking of cockblocking... Leave Gwen out of it. The ghost of Dennis Leary is here to ensure that Spider-Man sticks his Peter somewhere other than Gwen, making it psychologically impossible for him to park her for the entire film. Shot in cartoon, with little bits of live action added here and there, you won't believe it when you see this movie's world come to life on screen. There's actually not much you'll see that you'll be able to believe. Especially this f***ing kid. Seriously, not one cop could stop this kid from running out into the street? Sit through a first act that takes one hour to finally end, only to introduce you to a second act with whiny Harry Osborn and his fake disease. Retroviral hyperplasia. And for at least the 71st time, hear how much Harry hates Spider-Man all over again. You're a fraud, Spider-Man! <laughs> Discover the beauty of accidentally advancing the story through absolutely insane plot devices. Come see a motion picture that recycles all of its plot from every other comic book film, including for the third time in 12 years, The Green Goblin. 360 degree panoramic views of Times Square, a main villain who shoots lightning in the middle of New York, police cars being thrown, more funerals. Be prepared to ask the questions. How does Harry know that the Green Goblin suit will heal him when he uses the spider venom? Where did Electro get this spiffy suit that fits him perfectly? And what the f*** is this sh Experience Sony products at every turn, including this crappy TV Peter watches that proves not one zenith was harmed during the production. From a script by no less than four people, including the guys who wrote the first two Transformers movies. I am directly below enemy scrotum. Directed by Mark Webb. Wait a minute, is that supposed to be a joke? Starring Eduardo Slingerin, Malekith, Pepper Potts, Django Ungrounded, Steampunk Pig Vomit, Aunt Norma Ray, That Guy, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Time that we try to be friends. Wait a minute. Doesn't being friends pose the same danger only without the sex? Peter, why would you agree to this?